Hi, my name is Alan, and today we're going to be going over the gear that I carried with me on the PCT. I hiked the PCT in 2019 and tried to keep my pack as light as possible while still being comfortable and safe. I purchased all of this gear with my own money and have absolutely no affiliations to any of these companies. I do also want to say that you should always pick the gear that works best for your budget, your comfort level, your skills, and your trip. Everybody's trip is different and you should always pack accordingly. So snuggle up in a nice warm blanket, grab a nice hot cup of tea, and let's talk about some gear. The pack that I carried was the Hyperlite Mountain Gear 2400 Windrider. It's a 40 liter pack. I took out the frames and made it frameless. I also cut off quite a few of the straps on the outside, as well as adding on a shoulder strap pocket for my cell phone from an old pair of leggings. At this point, the pack has definitely seen better days, and after 3,000 miles of use, it's probably time for it to retire. Overall, I like this pack, but a full review is out of the scope of this video. My water filter of choice, the Sawyer Squeeze, and that went on to two one liter smart waters. These bottles are incredibly durable and I've had this one for over two years. I also carried a one liter Evernew bladder. The great thing about the Evernew bladders as opposed to the platypus is that the screw cap is compatible with the Sawyer filter. So you have it as a backup if need be. I also carried these noon tablets in the desert. These were great for electrolytes and vitamins to make sure that you stay hydrated when it's hot. They come in a variety of flavors, so you can pick the combination that works best for you. Up next, a controversial piece of gear, my medical kit. I tried to keep this as small and light as possible and carried a small pair of scissors, some tweezers, a small tube of chapstick. I prefer the liquid kind so it won't melt a tube of Neosporin, an assortment of band-aids of different sizes, some Luco tape on sticker paper backing, a bag of pills with ibuprofen, Tylenol, another small bag of pills for diarrhea or Imodium, a alcohol pad for cleaning wounds or things, and a small packet of Aquatabs. I actually ended up using these in the desert when my water filter froze, and for how small they are, I think it's totally worth it to have a backup way to filter water. On the outside of my pack, I carried some Body Glide. This was really nice to have in the desert or when it got hot to keep your skin moisturized, and the foot kind has vitamin E in it. I also carried some bug spray. This is Sawyer Picaridin in a little squeeze bottle, and that worked really well. I stored all of my food in a lock sack OP sack. Supposedly these are odor proof and I never had any mice or bears come into my camp at night, so they worked pretty well for me. Some people don't like their durability, but I never had too much issue with that. In the Sierra section, I carried a bear can. I really don't like these, but you have to carry one. <gasps> I just strapped it to the outside of my pack and carried my food inside. Next to my cook kit, I tried to keep this pretty simple. It's a farmer's fridge jar, very similar to a 20 jar with a small spoon inside. This is a go bite spoon that I ended up cutting in half so I wouldn't lose it and it would fit inside of the jar. This is definitely not for everybody, but it worked well for me. Also probably not for everybody is my poop kit. I tried to keep it really simple and used a deuce of spades trowel. They're really light and really durable and a lab wash bottle. You turn this bottle upside down and give it a squeeze and it cleans you where you need to be clean. You never have to worry about running out of toilet paper and it also reduces the impact that hikers in general have on the environment. Uh, the places you poop. So wonderful. So much better than sitting in a tiny box. I also carried a small bag with some extra toiletries like a toothbrush. I used a travel toothbrush so that the bristles stayed clean and protected a small bag with extra Sawyer O-rings, some floss, and a back flushing coupler for my filter that I would use when I went into town. In my hip belt pocket, I kept a Black Diamond Spot headlamp. This was more than enough for me for light night hiking and doing things around camp at night. I also carried a bug net. This was really nice to have in Oregon and Washington when the mosquitoes and black flies got really bad. I am in the heart of mosquito land. 
my god, these bugs make life so difficult. <laughs> like the tiniest little thing can just drive you fucking crazy. To keep my hands warm, I carried a set of fleece gloves and I picked up these black diamond mittens in Mammoth. They were a bit more expensive than I would have hoped, but I was really happy to have them and they kept my hands nice and warm. I also grabbed this fleece balaclava from a thrift store and was really happy to have it when the temperatures dropped. It's cold and it's really cold. To keep the sun off my face, my hat of choice is the Montbell parasol hat. It has a nice wide brim to keep you protected. My hiking shirt was the Outdoor Research Baja Long Sleeve Sun Shirt. Unfortunately, it's no longer made, but it is a UPF 50 rated shirt and it's super comfortable with a nice soft fabric and it's been incredibly durable. There are no holes or tears, even in the high use areas like the shoulders where your pack strap is constantly rubbing while you hike. I hiked in running shorts most of the time. I got these from a thrift store and anything works. Shorts are really breathable and have a great range of motion. If you had x-ray vision, you would see that I wore these Adidas underwear. I never chafed and had no problems with them. I used darn tough socks. I had two pairs that I would alternate throughout the trip, and I also kept an extra pair in my quilt for sleep socks at night. For shoes, I wore the Ultra Lone Peak 4s. I have really wide feet, so these were my go-to. The tread was pretty decent, and I never felt like it was a problem. Overall, I liked them quite a bit. I did have some issue with durability in the fabric splitting in the ankle and heel area, but I averaged about 800 miles per pair, pushing one to over a thousand miles. While I hiked, I used these Black Diamond Trail Pro trekking poles. Unfortunately, these aren't made anymore, but I've really liked them. They're all aluminum with metal flick locks, and they've been really, really durable. I've had these for many years and think they'll keep going for quite a while. I always recommend people hike with trekking poles. They're great for uphill, downhill, and river crossings. I also wore a Palante fanny pack, and overall I liked it quite a bit. There were some things I didn't like about it. If you want to see a full review, you can check out the link above. For insulation, I carried a Montbell fleece. This is a full zip mid-layer. It's really soft and really comfortable, and it kept me warm when I needed it to. Unlike most, I did not carry a puffy, and this worked really well for me. With a fleece, you can wear it while you hike and while you're in a camp. When paired with my wind shirt, which is a Montbell Tachyon, it's a really warm combo, and I never felt like I needed anything more. The wind shirt has elastic cuffs and an elastic waist cord. The draw cord on the waist is really useful for trapping in your heat and providing just a little bit of extra warmth when you need it. I also carried some Montbell wind pants. I didn't really use these that much, but the few times when I wanted them, I was really happy to have them. They weigh almost nothing, and for the weight, I think they provide a great deal of warmth. So I would totally recommend a pair of wind pants in some fashion. Unsurprisingly, my rain gear of choice is frog togs. I wore the Frog Togs poncho quite a bit in Washington when it was rainy, and I much prefer the poncho to the jacket. A poncho not only covers you, but it covers your pack, and it's much more breathable, so you don't have to be taking it on and off if it's raining throughout the day. My shelter was the Z-Pax Hexamid Solo Plus. It weighs about 14 ounces and had full rain and bug protection. I actually pitched it quite a bit, especially in Washington. The tent stakes that I used were the MSR Groundhog Minis. They were really durable, and I never had any issues with them. One of the most frustrating pieces of gear for me is a sleeping pad. I use the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite Women's because I'm short and it's a little bit warmer, but these pads leak. I went through two of them on the PCT and ended up swapping out for a Nemo Tensor, and that also leaked so I've not found a good substitute. Some people really like these pads and they work really well for them. I did not have that experience, so your mileage may vary. I kept my quilt inside of a trash compactor bag. They're really durable and waterproof and they're super cheap and you can get them almost anywhere. My quilt 
was the Katabatic Allsec 22, and it was the Elite version, not the Flex. It's really, really warm and really cozy, and I almost found it too warm in the middle of summer. But overall, I would definitely recommend a 20 degree bag, and I would highly recommend Katabatic gear. Up next is my electronics bag. Inside of here, I kept a 10,000 milliamp hour RAV power battery. I never felt like I needed more, and I did carry a camera on the PCT and no longer have it, but I used this to charge my phone and my camera, and it worked great. I also carried a single port Qualcomm quick charge wall charger and this USB to SD card reader so I could offload pictures to my phone. And I also had some headphones for listening to music while I hike. The last thing that I carried was a sit pad. I picked this up from a hiker box and ended up taking it with me the whole way. I really liked being able to throw this down and take a quick break, and I would highly recommend one. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I've included a link to my lighter pack with all the gear, as well as links to as many things as possible in the description section. Some of these items are no longer made by the manufacturer, and I've either not provided a link or put a link to something that's as close as I could find. I hope this helped, and if you have any questions, please let me know down below, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Peace.